So they gave me five minutes, like five minutes for all that's been going on. I could write a book with footnotes. So here is a book, footnotes and all. Chapter one. It was a dark and stormy night. Really dark, really stormy, very confusing and upsetting. Chapter two. That night was followed by a lot of feelings, shock, sadness, fear, anger, alienation, and more. Chapter three, then it got worse. A huge increase in hate crimes and harassment all over the country. Footnote, Anti-Defamation League, Southern Poverty Law Center. Chapter four, we started to make sense of what was going on. History is not a smooth curve, steadily moving toward progress. It goes up and down. Footnote, just about any historian. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Dr. Martin Luther King. In 1992, Colorado voters voted legalized discrimination against LGB people in the state. LGBT people were hit with all those feelings I talked about back in chapter three. But that awful amendment was the pathway to all the gains that the queer and trans movements have made since 1992. <laughs> Footnote, Jean Dubofsky. <laughs> Backlashes are an expected consequence to making progress. Used well, backlashes provide the way to waking us up and activating us. Footnote, just about any political scientist. <laughs> we must have been doing something really right because this looks like one very big backlash. <laughs> Footnote, anyone who is paying attention. <laughs> Chapter five, about those feelings we were having. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Nietzsche. Shock, we adapt. Sadness, we cry. To get out of a problem, you have to get into it. Footnote, Richard Cluft. Fear, it hardly ever kills us. I'm frightened all the time, scared to death, but I've never let it stop me, never. Footnote, Georgia O'Keeffe, and just about any woman you'll meet. <laughs> Anger, it's a reasonable response to violation. Footnote, Peter G. Osorio. But don't cultivate anger, direct it. Otherwise, it just becomes resentment. Resentment over time is like peeing down your own leg and hoping it makes someone else uncomfortable. <laughs> Footnote, friends of Bill. <laughs> Instead of that, try this. I cannot help but feel some measure of anger. I must deal with that anger. I don't want to wrestle it to the ground. I want to harness it. Footnote, Charles M. Blow. Alienation, part one. Make sure you don't give your power to people who would do you harm. It's good to watch what they're up to, but don't put all your focus on them. Just enough focus to be as safe as possible. Alienation, part two, focus on your allies instead. Build your culture, build your alliances, create community. Footnote, Wakesa Matsumoyo. Chapter six, activate. See the possibilities for mobilizing. Watch what is happening around you. Over 50,000 people have made donations to Planned Parenthood in the name of Mike Pence. <laughs> the coffers of many, many progressive organizations are getting similar attention. Footnote, Associated Press. Be a checkbook warrior and make sure some of your money goes to local groups. Notice we have allies in a variety of places. The governor of New York is setting up a whole new system for New Yorkers to report bias incidents. He also is starting a legal defense fund for immigrants who need legal assistance. Footnote, CNN.com. Chapter seven, take care of yourself, exercise, watch what you ingest, limit non-nutritious food and too many substances, limit reading too much depressive media. Sleep enough, footnote, your family. <laughs> Chapter eight, watch out for those negative messages about your group. This is the best time in the world to fight and win against internalized oppression. The most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed, footnote, Steve Biko. P.S., 
your most potent weapon is taking your mind back. <laughs> Chapter nine, privilege. We all have some. Know and own your own. It will help you not to wield yours in destructive ways. It will help you to spend your privilege well. Footnote, Suzanne Farr. Pay particular attention to people in groups that have relatively less privilege. Stand with them. Our liberty is bound together. If you have come to help me, you are wasting your time. If you have come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Footnote, Leela Watson. Chapter 10, coalitions. During most of the recent US history, oppression has been waged on different groups, one group at a time. This makes organizing really difficult. Now, many, many groups are being attacked simultaneously. The potential for mass mobilization and coalition building is greater than it has ever been in my lifetime. The message of that, seize the moment, footnote, we all know this. Chapter 11, take care of yourselves and one another. A wise person just before he died was once asked what he had learned in life. He said, be a little kinder. Footnote, Aldous Huxley. There are no more pages in my book. This must be the end, but it doesn't say the end. It says the beginning. Frederick Douglass saw that the end of the Republic begins on the day when the heroism of the struggle for equality yields to the cowardice of resentment. Final footnote, Jill Lepore, what could possibly be more important, more meaningful, or more fun than to make this election the basis for renewing the struggle for justice, equity, and peace? Let's roll.